Hey guys, how are y'all? Just wanted y'all to see how gorgeous that is. <clears throat> All right, so a little disappointed that we don't get to do small groups in person, but I completely understand. Um, something that the church leadership did say was that if we wanted to meet off campus and it, uh, everyone's okay with it, that we could do that. Um, something y'all need to talk to your parents about and decide if you're comfortable. If we do meet, it would be like outside in someone's yard, lawn chairs spread out, just hanging out talking in our chairs, six feet away, um, going over God's word that way, okay? So, um, tonight we're gonna finish up, level up, which is the leadership lesson. And this is one I really think is so important. Um, points three and four. So three was discipline and four was fear. And something that I wish that the discipline part had talked about more was having discipline in your own life. We talked a lot about accepting discipline and why you may be disciplined from your parents or from others or God, but we didn't really talk about developing it in your own life, which is what a leader does. A leader does accept discipline, but a leader is also disciplined in their life. Um, I think that's what makes a great leader is one who doesn't necessarily have to have the discipline from someone else because they're already on themselves, you know, to, to be the best to work harder. doesn't mean you're going to be perfect, but you're going to be trying your best to do your best. And you're going to be able to look at yourself honestly and just say, okay, this is an area in my life that I'm not strong in. This is the area I need to work on. You're going to be very realistic with yourself. You're going to see where your areas of opportunity and growth are and areas that you're not great at and either find someone who is great in those to partner with to accomplish a task or pray and get stronger in those. Um, so, and this was talking about how David did not discipline his children and his son did a horrible thing to his daughter and David didn't really do anything about it. And, and so I can't imagine that as a parent, but when I think about a leader, I think about leaders stand up for what's right. Leaders have those hard conversations because they want the person to be better. Um, it's, it's hard, believe me, I've had to have some hard conversations at work and it's not fun. But when you care about someone and you care about their growth and you care about them and the person they are, you're willing to do that because you, you, you care about them. And you know, it's, it's easy to sit back and know someone's doing wrong or know someone could do better in this or that or, and, and, and do nothing. You know, and, and it's real popular to go tell everyone and discuss it with everybody else but them. Uh, that's one thing at my branch that drives me crazy as a manager. They will be upset about something, not necessarily me, but just something. And instead of talking to me, the person who has the power to fix it, they'll go talk to everybody else who it can't do anything. And there's nothing that they can do to fix these things, but I have that power as manager. So you, in your age, you ha being that leader, to step up and talk to someone, <clears throat> whether that's me as your church leader, a coach, parents, teachers, to step up and say, hey, I'm gonna be the one to confront this situation. Um, being Having the discipline to do what you're supposed to do. You know, discipline is more than just getting, um, not punishment, but for get, having accountability for things you've done wrong, but discipline in your own life is something that is where you do the things you're supposed to do, not because they're fun, but because they're the right thing. Discipline to read your Bible, discipline to pray, discipline to be at church, to be involved. Have discipline with um, working out. You know, if you're an athlete and you're not willing to put in the hard work and be disciplined and routine about it, you're never gonna have success. People who are disciplined don't just do it every once in a while, it's part of their life. So being disciplined to be in the gym, to be at every practice, being disciplined in your schoolwork, just means that if you're, it's who you are, you're going to do it. You're going to do it because it's right and you're not gonna do it um, off and on. It's gonna be consistently in, done in your life. Um, that can be something like um, money management, uh, eating too much, anything. You know, being, having discipline in any area of your life is going to be such a benefit because it just means that you don't overindulge. You overeat. 
things happen. If you, um, you know, you sit down and watch too much TV or whatever it is, but anything that you do too much of, besides prayer and being in the Bible, is a bad thing. Drinking too much water can drown you. So discipline is really making sure you're doing the things you need to do consistently to be the best. <clears throat> um, and David wasn't doing that. He wasn't being disciplined in his parenting. So, um, and then the second one is fear. And I think part of being a leader too is you're going to have fears and be scared of things and being scared to step out because a leader is in front of the crowd, right? You can't be a leader joining the crowd. You have to step out. You have to be different. People have to look at you. Leaders cannot lead if no one's looking at them. If they're just part of the crowd, they just blend in. A leader has to step out, has to be different, look different, act different. So there's going to be fear in that. Um, but a, a leader is willing to do it despite that fear because the fear of the Lord is greater. You know, and, and fear of the Lord is not, oh, he's going to strike me down. It's he's so reverent. He's, he's created the whole world. He died on the cross for me. I have so much respect for him. I fear his authority and his power in my life. And, I'm, and I respect it. And doing what he wants me to do comes above anything else that is on the earth, whether that be um, being made fun of, being laughed at, that means not being part of the cool group because you're willing to step out and be different. Whatever that means, God's first. I fear him in that way. <laughs> um, but, but I want to talk about the actual, you know, fear that being scared too, because you're going to have that to some degree in leading. And, and yes, fear is a sin. And, and the Bible says that do not have a heart that's anxious and worry. But that's how the devil's going to attack you is, is that. So it's going to happen. It's how you respond to it. You know, a leader decides, hey, doing this is more important than the, whatever I'm fearing. And a lot of times what we fear is not really going to happen. Um, and a lot of times if it does, whatever we do is worth it. So as a leader, I may fear standing up to a boy. But in the long run it's going to be worth it for the life that is changed by that and you know when a leader doesn't just have to a leader is inventive with how they stand up for things like bullying a leader may know okay people are watching me everyone's watching me because i'm the leader so you don't have to go fight the bully you just need to say hi to the kid he's picking on right um let him be on your team at pe or whatever let him sit with you at lunch or go sit by him those things as a leader people are watching you that's going to beat the bully because everyone else is scared to stand up to him so they're not going to talk to the kid either but if you do it now it's cool now it's okay and you didn't throw the first punch you didn't have to get in an argument you didn't even have to say anything to the bully you never even talked to him all you did was focus on the kid right that's what a leader is they're inventive they look at what the best option is to get the best results <clears throat> um i think thinking about leadership on a sports team leaders are not perfect leaders mess up some teams have leaders who aren't even out on the field playing a lot the difference is that person is willing to be motivated and disciplined and to encourage the team so you know when a leader does mess up out on the field um take football if a leader is a wide receiver and they drop the ball what a leader does is understand yes i dropped that ball but I will let my team down if I let that one drop make me play bad the rest of the game. Because as a leader, the rest of the team is watching you. They can feel your energy. And if you let that one play affect the rest of your playing the rest of the game, then not only are you going to play bad, but that mindset and that attitude is going to affect the whole team. So leaders understand that they're, how they respond, how they act, what they do, their attitude, their behavior, their excitement, all of those things are infectious. And whatever they do, everyone else is gonna do. Um, you know, I learned this at work. Uh, I'd been a manager not too long, and I was just having a really off day, and I was just tired and just had a bad day and stuff outside of work. 
And you know, and, and we have been doing so good at work, hitting all of our goals and that one day I was off and, and I really just expected my team to keep on going and me have an off day. Well, they didn't. They all had an off day too. And, and that's when I realized that like, my attitude, my behaviors, my actions are gonna be the actions of everyone else that I'm leading. You, same thing, whether it's the 628 group, whether it's a sport, whether it's your classmates, whether it's your family, your siblings, people you're around, you, your attitude is infectious. So if you have a bad attitude, if you have a bad perspective, if you get mad at everyone and have drama, that's gonna cause that too. Y'all all know people in every grade who are like that. They're leaders, they stand out as leaders, but they're bad leaders. They're drama ridden. They're always upset about something. They look for the worst in people. It's infectious, right? Be Being a leader who is happy in hard times, who's always just nice and friendly, who says hi to the teachers, who doesn't get an attitude with them, who uses their manners, um, who shows up and works hard, who has fun. You know, school and everything can be fun. Someone who's there when they say they're gonna be there, who responds to my lessons and and really pushes the 628 to, to really be invested and involved right now. Those are the kind of leaders you want. Um, and those are the kind of leaders that I desperately need right now in the 628. Girls, you know, I'm worried. I'm worried about the future of our country. I'm worried about you kids. I'm worried about your lost friends and now that y'all can't have them spend the night on Saturdays and which I guess you could have them spend the night on Saturdays and bring them to church if their parents let them, but you can't bring them to Wednesday night classes. They can't meet me and see how awesome I am and want to be part of our group. Um, and if they don't get these things and, and God comes back or they die, I mean, that's it for them, you know, and um, it breaks my heart. I'm worried about our group because it's so hard to stay invested online. I know it, girls. I know it is. It's hard for me. It's hard for me. I I desperately need some leaders in our group to step up and say, hey, I'm going to make sure the 628 gets through this. Who messages the group constantly checking on them. Who has fun ideas or games. Who just talks and shares. You know, the boys group, they text a lot. And they're just talking about their day and the fun and, and they're and you know they're not all real close like outside of church i mean some of them are some aren't but different grades but but they they're sharing their lives with each other and that's what i want for us i want us to share to be excited for each other to talk i don't want to blow your phones up at all and i don't want to um force y'all to, to to do this but i want us to be part of each other's lives I, and, and I want y'all to want it. I want some leaders to step up and say, hey, this is important. Let's build this together. We want this. <clears throat> Let's do it. Um, so I'm, I'm praying for ones to step up. Also, you know, the new structure that we're going to go to when Eric and Amanda leaves is we're going to do a lot more on our own, us as a group. More about the focus on the 628 as a group instead of the whole group. We'll still do things with them. Um, especially the middle school boys, but really a lot of the accountability falls on our group to, 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 to God ourselves. And, and so that's going to be different, you know, and that's where we're going to really have to work together to, to make sure that we're meeting, to plan events and go do things together. And, and we need a way to communicate, to build this group up, to share Christ and to grow our relationships during this time. So I just pray that y'all take that time, take some time to really invest in it and think about what's, what's some great options for us. You know, it, it's just it's you guys and me now. So um, y'all are stuck with me. And if I have to go Zoom call you from your porch or knock on your window and wave, whatever it takes, I'm willing to do. But I need y'all to want to be invested involved too, okay? I love you guys, and I hope you'll have a great week, and um, I'm going to send you the small group questions. Please answer them, and send it to me and Gabby, and if you, we have five people who watch this video, and answer the questions, and send it to me and Gabby. Um, what can we do? We'll think of something to do. Y'all can pick the prize. <clears throat> uh, whatever it is. Whether it's, um, y'all pick it. If we have five people, y'all can pick it. 
if it's me running around in a clown suit outside, I don't know, whatever it is, if it's me doing something stupid in public, if it's y'all, if it's, I don't know, I don't care, if it's me bringing y'all food, whatever it is, y'all will pick five people, that's not many guys, seriously, five, and Gabby doesn't count, so, I love you guys, bye.